Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Warlords Battlecry 2! That's right, number fucking two, dude. Not three, not Blizzard number yet. However, it is a 2002 2D RTS, so I guess you got three twos there. If you really are hunting down for that, that Hollywood Blizzard number, you got it. Warlords Battlecry 2 is a very old game, but it's not as old as the first one. And actually, it doesn't change too much from the first one. So it's hard for me to have any superbly unique thoughts about this game compared to, you know, the, the first one that obviously was built in the same engine, it's built by the same people. You didn't really have too many changes in terms of, like, even a lot of the assets were reused, for example. And so it felt more like Battlecry 2 is an expansion pack or a very large update with its own, obviously, uh, own single player and a large number of additional races. And so it's interesting that Battlecry 2 went the way that it did with its non-linear campaign, if you can even call it a campaign. I like the ideas behind making it so that I can play as every race possible. It solves an issue with the first game where, because it was linear, it was just determined what side you were playing as at a certain point, depending on the mission. It wasn't like in this game where you could actually choose from the, an array of conquered uh, peoples to use. And so that is, uh, in and of itself, relatively interesting. I like it. I think it's cool. At the same time, however, uh, the level design really was lackluster. And I was already sort of on the fence about the level design in the first game. Uh, well, no, that, that would be putting it very nicely. Uh, the first game's level design was abhorrent. This game is, I guess there are some levels that are a bit more tolerable, but most of them are pretty bad. I don't know if this has something to do with the fact that you don't need to be in the area in order to gain uh, control of mines. Like, obviously, you just convert them and then you have them, so it's not like a conventional RTS where you have worker units. Um, it's not even really like anything else I've ever played when, in that regard. Like, it's, its economy is very different. However, that being said... I don't necessarily believe that it's the economy that's leading to all of these issues. It's just that it compounds the issue because the AI is very oppressive in the fact that they can micro way better than you can, obviously, because they're literally machines. And so they don't ever get tired. Um, and so it's totally simple for them to just con constantly be sending out units to convert stuff. However, at the same time, it's really difficult to say, hey, player, you've got plenty of agency here in these missions. I think it comes down to the heroes that you're choosing, as well as obviously the race that you are. There were some very obvious racial imbalances we saw where we were unfortunate enough to be undead in service to a now voided infested Terran. And unfortunately, as a result of our racial bias, we wound up being horribly undertuned and underpowered. It wasn't just that my hero himself was a pansy and was useful in an economic sense, or for rushes with skeletons. Like, that was pretty useful, actually. Uh, but in a one-on-one -on -one fight, he was obviously very, very inefficient. Um, I never felt like my hero was really that strong by himself, which I guess makes sense for a summoner-type hero. But I also didn't spec too far into summons, so at the same time, it didn't really feel like it was that important. I really just used him to inject a bunch of workers into my mines so that it would speed things up a little bit. And it's all about trying to speed this game up, because after a certain point, it's impossible to beat back the AI, because they micro too well. So, that's sort of uh, just part of the nature of the game. Maybe if you played at a slower speed, you would be able to play the game a little bit better. Um, obviously, it, the same could be said in any RTS, but I feel like there's, you know, the, the, the very fast game speed might actually go too fast. Like, I, if I had to guess, the professional play that could happen, maybe even did happen, in this game probably would have been played at fast, or maybe even medium, uh, as opposed to, to very fast. Just because of the the nature of the, the game, it's sort of a little clunky, like, you can't really do precise mouse movements, especially the way I'm playing it, where I have to play it in DX window, aka XD window, so if I move my mouse too far to the left, it'll phase off into my other monitor, because there's no mouse lock for some reason, even with the option ticked, so maybe I configured something incorrectly on my end, but it feels like I didn't. I remember, uh, Thoroughly debugging it many moons ago when I actually started playing this game months before I concluded it just recently. So, don't really know what else to say about the overall setup. I feel like if you were going to talk about game balance with this game, the level design definitely has to be addressed. The fact that there's just a bunch of pre-play stuff to stop you from rushing some AI 
on some missions is kind of annoying. And then there are certain elements that are very specific to this game that weren't present in the original. Like, I think there were a couple of missions in the first game that had something to do with a random chance to select a different map. It wasn't that the maps themselves were being randomized. It was that the maps were... Like, there's there's one or two variants or something. So you can have, like, version 1, 2, or 3 of a specific map. Now, in, in Battlecry 2, this is even more confusing in a way because you're supposed to be going to conquer a province but it doesn't feel like you're conquering it from a specific angle or anything like that it's it's not like your army is in a position and they move to a certain direction i actually came up with an idea to maybe resolve this issue where you would actually make you know for some of the larger provinces you would make you know one two three however many uh map levels that you wanted to make for that particular thing and you know th those would be like sub territories and depending on which angle you entered the province for, that would determine where, you know, which level you were accessing. Um, so you could actually, you know, if you controlled the provinces, multiple provinces connecting to it, you could actually, like, in the menu where you select your race uh, and thus determine your difficulty, which is a little goofy. I'll get into that in a second. Um, you would basically be able to also select which, like, angle you were coming in on the province at. So which point of attack you were going to select. And so, you know, maybe if you have uh, a province fully surrounded, you have access to all potential options to target that province. So there's, there's three different levels, then you can choose from one of the three if you have all of them surrounded, or if you have all of the pertinent directions covered. Whereas otherwise, maybe it's a little bit ch more challenging to do it because, you know, you're, you only have the hard level in order to do. I, I thought it was weird that they were going to make some missions so much easier, some variants of the same mission so much easier and it wasn't determined by my race either. It was like, uh, for example, the human capital. There's two different levels for the human capital. One of them is super easy, and the other one is much more challenging, but both of them can be rushed, obviously. And so, like, I, the only reason I lost the super easy variant is because I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting the capital of all things to have a fucking variant, and certainly wasn't expecting it to be that easy. So I probably made some really silly mistakes. But, you know, that, that was a, a case where I really started to think about, like, what would potentially be the solution to this? And I think it's fine if the capitals are always the same, or you know, I think it's fine if they aren't always the same either, if you do have a, a couple of different points of attack you can strike at. It makes it feel a little bit more realistic, and it adds a little bit more strategy to planning out your army movements, because you're actually, you know, you have to account for how many pathways you can take. So I like that. And honestly, I could take or leave the whole directional element of it if you just wanted to make it so that as soon as you have access to attacking a province, you can choose any of its available, you know, attack points. That's fine, too. You don't really have to necessarily make it about, you know, how many provinces surrounding that province do you have unlocked or an access to. But... I feel like there should have been more going on with regards to that sort of um, the, the random chance to roll a different map. Like, it feels silly to me that it's not on, in my control at all. I really just wanted to be the ability to decide which version of the map I was going to play and not just have it be up to a random chance. Because at that point, you might as well just quit and relaunch the mission until you get the easy variant. And obviously, that's not compelling gameplay, so I wouldn't really want to be doing that. So that was definitely something that was unique to Battlecry 2. I mean, I think it did happen in the first game. I, I distinctly remember it happening a couple of times. However, at the same time, even if it didn't, it's still not really that big of a deal in that game com by comparison because, you know, there, there was way less instances of it happening. And so, regardless of whether or not it actually did happen, this game showed that by itself, it was way worse in this particular title. Like, if it, you could have made it happen in every single mission in the first one, but... Because of the nature of the other systems that this game employed, like, uh, you know, your race determining your difficulty, I think it it checks how many games you've played as that race or something, and then says, all right, you know, you haven't played as the Dark Dwarves yet in this campaign, so we'll, we'll make it so that those missions are really easy for that. I thought that was so puzzling. I actually felt a little gypped in a weird kind of way when I was playing that last stream. Like, I did it because it was easy, obviously, but I also wanted to demo the races and show you guys what the new races that we were unlocking were all about. And as uh, Bailethal points out in the comments of the sixth video, he does mention that a lot of the races were very similar. And I felt that that was a little weird. I thought it was very strange that they made it like the elves were all very similar. And I, I think it's fine to have some of them use similar mechanics, like the wisps, for example. I thought it's fine to, for that to happen. But them all being carbon copies felt a little awkward. And I don't think that was, that was resolved in the third game. I feel like maybe they were more distinct partway down the line, but I think they all still use their recolored, you know, 
trees, for example, for production. So it's a little weird. I'm not really sure. I, I have nothing to say in defense of that, for example. I, I feel like it was pretty silly. But uh, nonetheless, I think that's um, that's much ado about the races. Like I said, the, some of them were unbalanced as well. Like the Dark Dwarves, they've got a really easy A-move strategy of just upgrading their siege weapons and their golems and then you know rolling through stuff with that. You don't really need to worry too much about it. I have a sneaking suspicion that they actually are broken just because of the siege weapon upgrades. And then obviously golems are incredibly tanky. So it becomes really difficult to try and stop them, especially for AI to try and stop them. Because obviously they have no real tactical knowledge of like how to play the game. They don't even go as far as Warcraft 3 does where they try to focus the siege weapons. Which is probably a good thing um, in the grand scheme of things. Probably makes the AI operate a little bit better. But... Uh, at the same time, it's like there's really no hope for them once you get rolling with that. So it's not really the same thing as the other races where you can't hit a critical mass because it's a lot easier for the Dark Dwarves to hit a critical mass, especially with their upgrades. Um, so not really sure what to make of that. I think if I had to replay the campaign from scratch and only use one race, the Dark Dwarves might actually be it. Um, I did use demons in the Barbarian, the final Barbarian level. And I played a couple of skirmish games as demons as well if you wanted to go search up... Uh, Warlords Battle Cry 2 skirmish games. I'll just put a link in the description, I guess. Because they they uh VOD for that is a little old, so it might be a little harder to find. But very interesting uh, that the races were so distinct in that respect, in terms of balance. So kind of unfortunate that we didn't get a chance to try out some more of the races and that the races also affected your difficulty. I feel like that probably shouldn't have happened. But at the same time, the missions were not difficult because they challenged you to play good Warlords Battlecry. The missions were difficult because the AI just cheated. And I think that there is a... There's a mod called The Protectors in uh, Battlecry 3. And one of the channel viewers, uh, Patrick, I believe his username is, Patrick7 or something, is actually working on an unrelated uh, Battlecry 3 mod. And... I'm interested in seeing how those end up shaping up because I think the protectors is like out there. It's final and the AI apparently does not cheat and is still uh, competent. So I'm interested in seeing how they managed to do that. Um, very interested in Battlecry 3 in general as a body, just the, the base game as well. But I'm surprised that there's custom content for it. And I'm eager to give that a run. So maybe that'll be later on this month. But uh, if not, it'll certainly be this year, 2019, year of the Battlecry. Um, I am definitely interested in seeing where you know, the where Ubisoft took them. I'm pretty sure they were the publisher for this. At the very least, I'm pretty sure they're the publisher of the third game. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. And unfortunately, I don't really have much to say on this game. Like I said, it's um a lot of the same problems as the first game. I guess it exposed more of the problems of the overall game design. Like, I feel like combat is really pointless. I don't know why you would tie units hitting at all to an RNG thing where they have a random chance to deal one damage, and that chance is abetted by increasing your combat score, which is like, okay, sure. For your hero, that might be okay, but it feels really, really bad in general for it to be everything. And for attacks that are as potent as some heroes tend to be, you, you know, increasing combat in that case feels kind of weird. And I think maybe a higher combat score... After a certain point, you stop missing and then you start critting or something. I, I feel like that was the case because there were some damages that were not consistent at all with like the damage values that, you know, certain fighters, for example, would say like 55 damage and they would obviously attack very fast. But sometimes they would be doing like 200 damage a hit is what it felt like. And, you know, there's obviously times where you'll see like, uh, you know, a skeleton attacking a tower, for example. And sometimes that skeleton will deal five damage to the tower. Sometimes they'll deal 20 and sometimes he'll deal 55 <laughs> or something retarded. And it won't really seem related to, like, upgrades. It's obviously, there's no upgrade that boosts damage by that much. It, it just seems like there's a random chance to crit as well as a random chance to miss. And I'm sure that if there is a random chance to crit, that it would probably be affected by combat as well. So it just feels like too much RNG. You already have RNG on your spells, RNG on which level you're going to play in some provinces, and RNG on a bunch of other things. It feels really, really bad to tie combat to that. And, you know, you already have, like, random uh, damage values in stuff like Warcraft 3, for example. Well, what if, in addition to that, you just had a random chance to miss? <laughs> it's like every unit was on higher ground at all times or something psychotic. Feels really, really silly. I don't know why you would try to include that. There's also no real subtext for, like, when you miss either. Because there's no difference in the sound effect. It just deals one damage instead. It's really, really goofy. I would prefer that it didn't happen like that. 
So generally, there needed to be more visual clarity on a lot of the gameplay systems, and a lot of the gameplay systems just were behind curtains. You really didn't know what was going on as a player, even one who is statistically minded like myself, who doesn't really mind, you know, looking into these stats and seeing what they do. But at the same time, you know, that's not really my... It's not really the most exciting aspect of the game, for sure. Reading up on this stuff on a wiki or whatever, it definitely feels out of place. And at the same time, you look at, like, what the what it actually accomplishes and it, it doesn't make battles more exciting it just makes them more frustrating when you lose and takes away some of the credit for you you can take for making a good play because obviously part of that is luck and you can, literally cannot account for luck in terms of skill so very unfortunate i think um, battle cry 2 is a game that, that had a lot of potential i still think i would recommend it just because it's more solid than a lot of the other you know rts's that would come after it for example i do feel like it's better than warcraft 3 um, just in terms of how fun the races are to play. And the games can end a lot sooner. It's very flawed. Uh, for sure, you would have to, like, sort of do some of the work for the developers by, uh, if you're playing this in skirmish mode, for example, setting the AI to specific settings or um, maybe calibrating the maps in a specific way so that there weren't too many resources or too few. And, you know, you have to find sweet spots for whatever your preferred play styles are, but also for, like, general shit, like, you almost wish there was a no rush timer or something, which is really not what you ever want to have because you don't want to just disbar players from attacking each other. But rushing definitely seems like a valid strategy in a lot of cases, especially as a summoner like uh, what N was in this particular case, Todd Bringer 4, the legend himself. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure how to make sense of that one in particular. I feel like it definitely should have been more straightforward as to like whether or not I can opt for a late game, but against the AI, it was impossible. So, you know, maybe in skirmish, it's a little bit more reasonable to go for a late game or something, and then you can decide not to rush and just instead scout. Uh, I think the retinue system probably should have been abolished and maybe maybe reworked into some situation where you could summon your retinue for like a, maybe a discount versus the normal unit. And that would be like the benefit from for having them as a retinue. Um, so you can decide which, you know, elite units you want to bring in under uh, a discount discounted prices of the base unit and i think that could be a lot cooler a lot more oriented i mean you, you're basically allowing your the player to opt into that sort of usage and so there's a lot of ideas that i have for like the basic systems of the game but uh obviously i don't expect that it's very easy to to implement those in like custom content or whatever so i'll leave that to the professionals uh who are making the protectors and other such mods i encourage you guys to go ahead and read ahead of the class and check it out ahead of me and tell me what you guys think because I'm always interested in that sort of stuff. Tell me what you guys think of this game as well. Um, definitely has a, a lot of issues. Like I said, you, you have to hit your own sweet spot if you're going to play this. Um, and it's, you know, sort of the jury's still out on what that is. Definitely think spells, for example, still too busted. Uh, I had a sneaking suspicion in the first game that mages were really, really busted. And I feel like they are, especially fighting that, um, that, that fire mage in the demon keep. That he just walks over and casts a spell that destroys your hero. Uh, that's pretty psychotic and definitely should not be in the game. So at least that we can dispense with entirely, <laughs> but whatever, man. I'll leave it at that. That was Warlords Battlecry 2. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, stay tuned for some additional Battlecry productions in hopefully the very near future.